Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 103. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building. Reintroduce yourself to the audience. Your sister, Sherelle, but also Real Estate Rail on Instagram. Copy that. Let's start off correctly. Sound like them. Well, we can smile. All right. Now, y'all already know what it is. Get comfortable at I am Hype on Instagram and Twitter. Also, now I'm on TikTok. You know, I'm not really a video kind of guy, but you know, there's people over there, so we got to make sure that we over there. It's at I am Hype 23 over there. Uh, yes, that is definitely my page. Um, eBlock Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock on the eBlock Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Wednesdays, 216 to Blend. That's 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. Fridays, the IC Podcast Radio Network and THC Media on Saturday at 10 a.m. Also, Sundays are still wide open West Coast. Thursdays are now wide open West Coast. Um, Custom Hustle World on Instagram. That is my clothing line. Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. We do custom jerseys, jackets, sneakers, T-shirts, sweatsuits, however you need it. We are going to customize the situation. And we're working on the hats. Those might be available very soon. Um... Yes, but you design your own jacket. You design your own jerseys pretty much. You know, they I tell people all the time they are one of one unless you buy four. And the sneakers are available in any color. And you can get something else on them other than custom hustles. It's going to cost you a little extra, but we make it worth your while. And if it's out of town, you know, you handle your shipping and handling will give you a little bit of an extra cost. We ain't going to kill you. Uh, H2H Cleaning on Instagram. That is my cleaning company. We do roofing, plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, flooring, carpeting. However you need it. And if you need your real estate situations tightened up, sis, let them know where they can get you, get at you with that type of situation. So before I told you guys real estate.rail on Instagram, but right now you should be real estate.empire on Instagram. That's going to lead you to the information you really want to know. Copy that. You see, we are full-time hustlers over here. We're making things happen all the way across the board. <laughs> now, episode 103. This is the Jeezy edition. Sis, are you ready? That's it. I'm ready. How did life uh, treat your dreams? When you were a kid, you had certain dreams, aspects, uh, certain dreams, goals, and aspirations. But then real life happened. So how did life interrupt your dreams? And what were those dreams that you had? Life done drug me. Life done drug me (laughs) through the streets. (laughs) Done shoveled dirt on me. No, but I knew, I knew really early what I wanted to do. Like I went to child's elementary in South Philly and I knew all the way back then, maybe third grade or so. No, (laughs) shout out to child. Child was it. Uh, (laughs) I knew then that I wanted to be a lawyer. Um, I don't, I I was super duper shy. I was scared of elevators. So I was like, look, I got to get those two things under control. I was young, but I knew those things, those two things weren't going to you know, help me. But all these years later, that's not what's going on. I mean, I, I, I got waitlisted at New York law. Um, I didn't get in there, but I did finish a paralegal program, um, beyond a four-year degree and right now finishing, uh, my master's in real estate development, but law is my baby and life, you know, through kind of threw it away. And my my daughter, my oldest daughter, 14, she keeps telling me, like, you know, you can still do it. I think she just wants to be able to say she has a mom that's a lawyer. But I don't think she really cares about my dreams like that. But life did me dirty. She is is encouraging you. you (laughs) No, (laughs) no. You know, they want to be associated with what's going on. So. I think I think she's encouraging yeah, me my like mom that, Claire but... Huxtable. That's an <laughs> up right there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like law school is stressful, and with these two kids, so I would say the thing, the main things that uh, kind of detoured everything was, um, obviously I I didn't we don't come from no rich background, nothing like that, and older generations didn't save in certain ways that are big now, where they could compound their money, that sort of stuff. So I did use school loans and that sort of stuff. And I got married. I got married young. I got married at 20 years old and got divorced after that. And then my second had my second daughter as well. And that was another divorce. So picking up the pieces repeatedly and kind of marching forward by yourself 
that doesn't, you know, kind of move you towards your goals sometimes. Sometimes you got to step back a little bit. So that's what happened to, my, <laughs> to some of my dreams. Your dreams change. Um, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> um, so I always tell people, like, my, uh, when I was a kid, most kids got dressed to cartoons. I got dressed to Sports Center. And Stuart <laughs> Scott, that was my man. Once they had a black face on there showing me that we can do this too. And he's using like the current slang and like he got the little style and flavor that we had. It was like, so this is interesting. It was that and it was Martin. Watching Martin, even as a kid, he's on here on the radio show and it's like, yeah, this is TV, but they're really like paying somebody to do this. So like you just get to sit here with your man and just answer the phone, crack jokes and like, this is what we doing. So like those two things combined is a podcast. You didn't know that in 1994, but in my head, it was just like, all right, so you just get on Sports Center and then you know that you can run it like that. But that was always it. It was that and it was being a chef. Uh, I always liked to cook. When I was a kid, like back in them days, my dad would always be like, man, what you mean you want to cook? Like, yeah, they got dudes on the cooking channels and all of that. That's doing these infomercials and stuff. Like, the dudes is in there too. So, like, I used to have like the little oven and the little grill. I remember I had the little grill toy with the smoke joint. I never even used the smoke because, like, I'm saving the smoke for like special occasion <laughs> <laughs> and never used the damn smoke. <laughs> um, like I, my mom would buy me like real muffins and I would be playing with them in the little toy oven and them drinks would go bad on me because like you ain't supposed to keep them for three weeks. Like they start turning green and stinking. Yeah, I get these and get hard. Out. They be hard. Yeah. They'll cut you. They'll cut That's you after a couple weeks. Yeah, them jaws become uh <laughs> them jaws become book weights. <laughs> but like, yeah, that was always the goal. Like that was always what I really wanted to do. And now I'm kind of doing both of those things. Uh, it's not the way that you imagined it. Yeah. Like say because as a kid you was imagining Sports Center is on TV, and even then it's like I don't really want TV. These niggas gotta wear all this makeup and like I'm not mm. all of that. Uh, but now that you showed you that a radio show could be TV or a podcast could be TV or streaming or whatever the situation might be now. Uh, what about that's a the, beautiful way of looking at it. Like wow, that really just made me rethink certain things I just you know the how I how I basically put it like my perspective of it you just kind of you kind of you kind of polish it up and kind of like repurpose it you repurpose your dream and that's kind of like what you did to fit what you what you like I mean because as a kid as a, let's just call it a 10 year old mm -hmm. the world is so big in your head like as to what you're going to be able to do the possibilities are endless and then like you said you get married you have a kid you have a parent that gets sick you lose a friend, like real life starts to happen. You're not imagining any of these things as a 10 year old, you know, yes. for, the, for the most part, we can't even, cause some people done lost people at a very young age, but you, you don't have those things to compare anything to. So as long as you still hold on to what the crux of the situation was, as long as mm -hmm. you still believe in that dream, it's one of them things that everybody ain't gonna believe it and everybody can't go. And that's perfectly fine. But as long as you believe it, as long as you keep it, as a priority and as long as you make it a thing then it can always be a thing that is a beautiful way of looking at that and and also you saying that also makes me want to um it, it makes me realize how inflexible I was with my with my dream like it has to exactly look like this I ha it has to exactly be this path it has to be this and that like for instance with real estate development I always thought like I had to come straight out the gate with um you know, you got to have all this money to get these properties, yada, yada. But the second way to go about it, if, you don't, if you're not starting out that way, is become a developer associate with a firm, with a real estate firm or a development firm or architecture firm or whatever through getting your education first. So if you don't have the money, you can go that way too. So that was a part of, that was a, that's def, that thinking is a part of um, definitely, like I said, repurposing what your dream looks like and taking certain things into account. And I think in all transparency, I think I'm uncomfortable. Um, I think I'm uncomfortable with that sometimes, like uh, kind of switching things around and doing it another way. Because it uncomfortable becomes kind of a good thing, though. Because if you want to make a dream for a dream type of situation that we're talking about, because it's not going to be in the perfect box, like you said, this, everybody imagines things to be this way. And that was the drawing from the wire. You want it to be one way, but it's the other way. 
you imagine that it's going to be this way, but also for these things to work out, you're going to have to be uncomfortable in these situations. You're going to have to realize it's not always going to go my way. You're going to have to realize it might. The thing I always say that I don't, I don't like LeBron on the court, but I love what he did off the court as far as putting his homies on, as far as we're going to dominate the entire game without getting 30. And we'll be able to dominate and do this for the rest of forever because the game is bigger than just who's fought, like who's playing who at the center tonight. The game is so many more things. And it's like, it's always ways around the train. Like you just said, all right, I can't, I ain't got the bread to buy two houses real quick, but I can find my way in the door. That's why I always tell people, man, uh, it's a thousand, it's a million ways to hustle. <laughs> and it's just all about your mentality and your outlook and how you going to go about it. And are you, do you really want it? Is it really something that you want to do? Or are you going to let the things that happen in your life deter you and stop you from doing it? But that's also why it's important that people think that if they're just like money making focus or possession focus or career fo focus, that'll get them to what they want to get to. They, they feel like, you know, all distractions, you know, they got to be out the way or this and this and that. But really, if your mind is sick, you can't even see it that way. So, for instance, if a lot of things keep happening in your life, like divorce or people dying or you lose your job or you get an illness or whatever the case is, um, that can have that can that can do a number on your mental state to whereas you can't even see the good in certain things for for a particular period if you don't get the help or the support or using the wrong coping mechanisms or whatever you won't even be able to see it so that's why I was saying it's helpful that whatever you're doing is working because it's giving you the positive perspective it's giving you the way a way to look at um things like optimistically so that you can actually have what you need to be motivated to do what you need to do to to meet your dreams and your goals so that's the awesome. main piece is hard it's hard to keep that mentality something that you just said right there though it's one thing i always tell people if you're the smartest person in the room get the fuck out the building stuff <laughs> because <laughs> you can't always know everything and mm -hmm. like you just said you might have a problem where now i'm the one that got sick i'm the one that had the issue lost the job or whatever the situation might be and you have to have uh you can't say that nobody's there for you when you don't allow them to be there for you. Yeah. If you don't say, yo, this is what I'm going through, this is the problem, or this is what's wrong, then it's like, how are we going to fix the problem we don't know is there? I just talked to my little cousin mm -hmm. earlier. I just told her, like, I told her, I don't know, man, what was this, probably like 10 years ago, her mom died. I told her at the cemetery, if you don't call me and tell me something's wrong, I can't fix it. Mm -hmm. I'm not a mind reader. I can't, I cannot physically be there every day to check on you. But if you call me and say, this is a problem, now we can do something about it. And you got to have people who are for you in your corner. Mm -hmm. People always say like your circle, your circle, people be thinking a circles is so big. Your circle is really probably about, probably at a maximum of four or five people. Mm -hmm. I was thinking and five, yeah. Your ma the, the maximum four or five because these are the mm -hmm. people who are going to be honest with you and have your best interests at heart and these are the type of people that you lean on and that you bounce these things off of and who you can keep yourself motivated by it don't even be that they're necessarily talking about whatever it is that you're going through but you got to also still try to see the positive in all the situations because you get things because you can handle them mm -hmm. so it's like yes I try wow to, i try not to be so wise yeah, you know, at I am hype, you know, pay talent. <laughs> I know some seminars we doing all of those. You said you can still catch those. Just DM me at I am hype on TikTok at I am hype twenty three. <laughs> but yeah, like it's just it's all about like man. I tell it's how many people do you? Res I really gotta respect the way that you move for me to come to you with anything. And if I don't respect mm -hmm. the way that you move, then I ain't bringing nothing to you. Like. <laughs> Because it's like, we ain't going to look at that the same way. Then why am I bringing it to you? We don't yeah, have why the same bother? Outlook. Yeah, we don't have the same outlook. We don't have the same type of dreams, aspirations. And maybe you just don't understand what I'm trying to do. Somebody hmm. could have told you, like you said, I'm a seven-year-old going, you know, I want to be a lawyer. Plenty of people, I'm sure, went, to give me no lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that's not happening. All right, Listen. copy. You just don't get it. <laughs> and, 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 and people who, like, know your parents or your situation, they them project. People could, them people could they, be they your parents. Their limitations. Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah. They absolutely. project their limitations yes. on you. Because they mm -hmm. don't have the vision that you have, and they're trying to demean what it is that you're doing. Those absolutely. are the kind of people who you just go copy. So tomorrow <laughs> when I do it, the price of the brick just went up. Don't call my phone. Was, 
No, you can call me. The house was twenty thousand. This joint is forty seven now. Yeah. Do you want it or not? Jerseys mm-hmm. was this price. They are now doubled for you. you know what I'm saying that's yeah. just how it goes. You want to play the game? I'm playing the game too. Mm-hmm. So now, uh, what was it though about the seven year old rail that made you say like? I want to be a lawyer. This is what has attracted me to be in this. Because I gave the backstory of me, you know what I'm saying, you get yeah. dressed cartoons and copy. Yeah. Well, my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, so my, my dad's mom, she, her and my mom actually did a lot of marches. And I was with them uh, during those marches. And I saw like the concept of justice. I saw the concept of like speaking up. When I told you I was like kind of shy, and I saw the concept of like um, advocating for other people and what that felt like. And it was like, it's so, it sounds so dramatic, but it was like electrifying. Like I felt it in my body kind of thing. And I was like, I want to do that like all the time. And then beside the fact of I was, a, uh, um, it seemed, it seemed easy to attain because when I looked into it, first of all, I loved reading since the beginning of whatever, whenever. And that would be included in it. And beside the fact of once I got older, um, going the paralegal route, uh, getting cool with judges and that sort of stuff, um, the things that were required for the job, I noticed that I was actually naturally good at it. So that was like, it was, it was almost scary to see like I had that seed planted and then it was like, look, this matches everything you already know how to do. So it was like, okay, then that's what I'm supposed to be. So when life kind of hit over and over again, I almost felt like, um, I don't know, it just it just felt like something that I couldn't get away from. And I, I literally feel it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a horrible feeling actually to not be in law the way that I thought I was gonna be in law um, because it's something that's just always there, always nagging me, always has my attention, my interest. So it's like hard to get away from. It's really hard to get away from. All right, so we talked about now seven and 10 year old rail. What kept this dream alive for 20 year old rail now? That, or not even 20, let's go because you said I got married at 20. Let's go about 22, 23. Now that a little bit of life didn't hit you, now you'd have had a little bit of adversity, things have gone on and transpired. Now, what makes 23 year old rail go, all right, but I still think that I can still work towards this, even though now damn, the world ain't looking the way that I thought it was going to look, but I'm still kind of going down this route because this is what I still want to do. See, actually, when I was like, when I was like, um, maybe, maybe 21, maybe 21 or so, I, I got my first shot. So first hair salon. And I thought, um, I think I closed, I closed a couple of years after that because it, it just was hard to do by myself. I couldn't serve the clients, do the marketing, clean up, open and close. I couldn't do all that at, you know, I didn't have a blueprint for it, but I always thought that having salons and doing certain things were going to help me pay for law school because I didn't want to have student loans. So what made me think that I could do that was the fact that I didn't know that I could like run a shop <laughs> at the mm-hmm. age and coming out of divorce or whatever, doing all the, being able to do all of those things, like going through adversity and seeing that I could let me know like well you can do more stuff then like it's not it's not the end so that's what kind of let me know like it people try to people um try to shy shy away from adversity a lot because it don't feel good it doesn't feel good but adversity is the thing that like pumped me up early on um and then when you get older and you keep experiencing adversity it start jading you like you start getting like all right this is enough <laughs> all right see <laughs> adversity is the thing that we hate but it's the thing that we need because it's the thing that makes you appreciate whatever that outcome is going to be good 100%. bad or different if if that outcome turns out to be what you wanted it to be and you've been thinking about this since you was a kid it's going to make you love and appreciate the fact that you achieved that accomplishment so much more yeah so yeah it's definitely the thing that none of us really want to have but like again you don't get nothing that you can't handle you got but it was in hindsight yeah, you don't get that I mean, appreciation until hindsight. Yeah, yes. You don't appre- yeah, you're not <laughs> you're not down bad with the situation going, man, I can't breathe, but oh, this is great. Because <laughs> four years from now, you can't see past four years from now. Yes. Yeah, you don't know what that situation is going to be. Yeah. It's a it's a hindsight 2020 situation, mm-hmm. but 
that be the perspective that you'd be having that you didn't have as a kid because you didn't have nothing to compare it to. All you had to compare it to was playing with Barbies and wrestling, man. Like, <laughs> Jacoby. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> the thing for me now that made me stick like kind of on the path was when I was 13, my mom and my dad opened the first store. Okay. So when they opened the store, this is like eighth grade. Like teachers used to come to the class and be like, hey, I just ordered a wing platter and a fish platter. Do you think that's done? How the <laughs> f- do I know? I'm in here trying to get this algebra done. Like, I'm not at the store. Okay. I'm not really making it. I can call over there and say, hey, what's up with that order? But I, I don't know. Oh, that but, was so good. Please. Uh-huh. Cash, <laughs> them, so cash paycheck, them cash paychecks wasn't bad either. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so like when I'm 13 and they open the first store, that kind of keeps the uh that keeps the cooking bug in me. And that also sparks like the business side of things too. I yep. always, always been like a a hustler, a go-getter, because that's what I grew up around. Everybody was getting money, everybody's making something happen. When I'm nine and graduate from fourth grade, uh I get my autograph book and my cousin had the store on 24th Street, the um, you know 23rd Street, the Islamic store on Reed Street. Mm-hmm. I would get the bean pies from him. I buy 25 pies and buy them for a dollar, sell them for two, and we're mm-hmm. gonna sell them. Juma, and then if we don't hit them all at Juma, we are gonna hit the barber shops. I'm nine, thinking about how can we flip this money into some more money. Mm-hmm. My brother is 13, and he's working for me, riding around on the bike with me, and I'm paying him at the end of the day. But that's always been my mentality. So now we get to. 2008 is the first time I hear a podcast. 2007. It's like a trade deadline, John. And I'm like, these niggas are just going to talk about all the trades? Like, what is this? Like, <laughs> And I'm like, damn, I didn't even know you could do this type, John. My mom always said, like, you should do a radio show. You should do a radio show when I'm like 14. And I'm like, you should have made me do it because we could be up some damn where. <laughs> um, yeah, kids don't typically be focused on their own. Not consistently. They might jump yeah. in, but you got to hold them to it. Now we fast forward to 2017 when Boar calls me about let's do a podcast. Let's we started OLF then. Mm-hmm. And the first time me and him sat there and did the pilot, because the pilot was just me and him. It wasn't 57 of us at the time. <laughs> and it was like, I mean, all right, it sounds good enough. Uh like we know what we're talking about. You know, we will work out the kinks because you don't know what you don't know in the beginning. Mm-hmm. But doing that and selling two wristbands. To another cousin for four dollars, it was like, oh, this is it. This is what sparks how to hustle everything, how to mm-hmm. hustle enterprise, because mm-hmm. it's like based off solely the stuff that I'm gonna say, do, wear, and all of that, like we can make money off of this. That's what made me go a thousand miles an hour into H2H cleaning and the custom hustle and to how to hustle podcasts, seminars, the live shows and everything else that goes with it is I'm going to get, you can make money and be paid solely off of what you think, how you feel and why you feel that way. Mm-hmm. And people are going to tune in every week just to see what I think about these situations. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> like, Human nature wanting to find out. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. um, something that I always tell people, uh, the great American philosopher, Yo Gotti said, she went to real estate school. I'm hanging up. She do hair off on the side. She went to school to practice law. I need her on my side. And I called you then and asked you, is your guy shooting at you on this track? Because <laughs> this one sounds like it's about you. Yes. Listen, I, I'm, that's what that's my anthem now because I never never paid attention to none of it, but I really did. This this was definitely, the situation. I definitely caught that one as soon as he said it. Hold up. Now. This was the situation. Look. I, I went to cosmetology school. No, look, I was working at Marriott Downtown Hotel doing housekeeping. I was doing that. And this probably was like, what was I? Probably like 19 or so, maybe like 19. And I was working at the hotel. This was like eight to four. Then I went to cosmetology school <clears throat> around near like 16th and Chestnut from five at night till 10 at night. Then on a weekend, I would go over Jersey to real estate school. So I was doing that until I finished. In the midst of that, um, got married, had my first daughter. I think I took a few months off or something from finishing cosmetology school and just finished finished after and got licensed. So I really thought like having shops and being an agent, that sort of stuff was going to help me pay for law school. 
it wasn't supposed to be like a long-term thing, but that those two things kept coming back up. Real estate and cosmetology kept coming back up um, repeatedly and got me out of a lot of, a lot of situations where, you know, stuff was slow and that kind of stuff. So you, you really don't know which way it's going to turn, but you really, it really does boil you down to what you said, like your perspective, how you look at it, how you're going to move it, that kind of thing. And also people was constantly contacting me for, um, like I had did like internships in city council and uh, like prison society, uh, other nonprofits that end up getting jobs there. People were calling me for the resources and for what I knew because of who I was connected to, the organizations I was in, that kind of stuff. So I started charging people. Like if I'm giving you information that helps you win a self-represented uh, case with social security or something like that, you are about to pay me now. We call You're that H2H. That. We call that H2H that consultant over here. That is what you are about to do now. It's, it's no longer free. You will not be calling me on my phone all hours on the weekends. Let me pick your brain real quick. That's the that's the tagline. Pick your brain. I no longer do pick your brain. I'm not at the age where you can pick my brain. I have real bills and real children, and real things to take care of, and I can't oh, keep exchanging my time for free things. This is all right. Now, talk to us a little bit about uh, the real estate situations. Do we have anything where we can teach the people on how they can be more like Ms. Robinson? If they want to be an agent, if you're talking about that. Um, yes. So on the real estate side, well, let me back up and say, I'm a real estate agent with uh, Realty Mark, Realty Mark Associates. I've been in real estate since 2008. I was over in New Jersey first, then I got my Pennsylvania license after that in 2009. So I'm no longer in Jer dealing with Jersey real estate at all, but um, in Pennsylvania. So it's been about 14 years. And even when I wasn't truly active, I was still doing consultant. So under my, um, anything else like where people need like permits and licenses and uh, business licenses, doing LLCs, that kind of stuff is under Sherelle Robinson Enterprises, LLC. So it's official. It's not, I'm not playing games, charging y'all for certain things. I'm a real life paralegal that really know how to do contracts that really takes care of uh, real estate. I'm not like an Instagram real estate guru. That's not what I am. Been in this no 14 bit, years. No, no Bitcoin in your, uh, in your no, profile. That's Forex is not in my, <laughs> Forex currency is not in my bio. But um, being a real estate agent, all you have to do is find like, a, usually at, in colleges and stuff like that, even online programs, they have, um like a pre-licensing course so you usually take a couple classes or whatever the case is for a short it's like a short period and you take your state board for whatever state you want to be a, re a real estate agent in and when you pass you know you pay your fees if you want to become a part of a board for that area you do that if not you just function um you know regularly as a real estate agent you find a company to come under and that's where you quote unquote hang your license and that's where you work from that's who kind of supervises your deals but you function all on your own. You're an independent contractor. You're not an employee. You don't get a paycheck. You, they're not paying your taxes. You take care of everything on your own. So the marketing is on you. The discipline is on you. The scheduling is on you. Getting clients is on you. Everything's on you. And um, Boy, you better pay them taxes or they're coming after you. <laughs> because because wow. it's a real thing. But that's how you become a real estate agent. But a lot of people tap out within the two years that you're supposed to renew your license, they don't even renew because they don't have what's needed in themselves to motivate themselves to do everything that they need to do. They don't have the discipline. They don't have the organization. They don't have the resources, the training, none of that. Plus you don't be in the right rooms. You don't, like I just said, when we started yeah. the podcast, you don't know what you don't know. Yes. And if you stick with the person who they can't see the vision and they can't see what you're trying to do, you gotta get away from them. You got to get with like-minded individuals and people who are trying to grow, prosper, and do something. It might not even be what you're trying to do. It might be just that they got a business mindset. They got a positive outlook. And it's like, all right, I need to be more, I need to gear myself more towards this person because even though they're not into what I'm into, they're into something that's going to motivate you, something that makes you look and say like, damn, all right, well, I can still do it. Because that was the whole thing with me for Stuart Scott being on there, seeing a black face on Sports Center and what just another white boy on there watching the highlights going in Jordan gets the slam dunk. Like I never knew that. As much as we used to watch basketball when we were so when we were little, I never knew that that's what you were paying attention to. 
I always tell people, I tell people Crazy. all the time, I pay, I pay attention to everything. Mm-hmm. You don't I know, speak on everything, like, though. You don't speak on everything, but mm-hmm. you pay attention to everything. Copy. Mm-hmm. Um, now, before we go, this was something that we were doing on the podcast. You are the perfect person for this because you are, this is uh-huh. my sister. You slide my DMs asking me, yo, what's up with real? We might have a problem. Just letting you know now before you do. Um, <laughs> real, this, so is my, this is my sister. Um, when you hear my name, what do you think? Somebody says, yo, I heard you on the ball hang podcast. How you know the ball? What do you think when you hear my name? Oh, my God. I, I think the first thing that comes to mind is like the biggest heart. And I think genuine and I think security and I think consistency. That's what I think of when I when when somebody says your name. And that's that's probably why we we've been linked so long. And, you know, you know how people outgrow outgrow each other. I think we kind of grew with each other because those things like are easy to um, that makes it easy to kind of continue your relationship with a person. If a person is genuine, you don't have to keep figuring them, figuring, you know, what their personality is every time they move through a different stage in life. And that's what it just feels like when somebody is consistent and they're genuine and you don't have to second guess anything and their heart is pure. That's what you stick to. And you got to give it back because they're not real people are not just going to let you come take from them. And that's how you are, too. Like you'll you'll cut it off, too. So. I, I, that's where the genuine piece comes from too. But I, I think genuity, I think genuineness and consistency and a whole heart. That's what I, that's what I uh, feel when I think of, when I think of you. So the thing is, like I said, I always been like around just niggas that was hustling, people who was doing things. And if a person is not somebody who's doing anything, yeah, I might still have your phone number. We still cool. We still going to talk. Like the first time I had you on, we talked about the family situation and why is the family as important. It's because those text messages go both ways. If every mm. time I look at this phone and all the texts are, are you good and it's never are you good coming back the other way, then that's how oh you grow God. apart from somebody. Mm-hmm. If you have a situation, like I said, where we don't see you doing the, having the salon and all of that was a motivating situation for me because we the same age. Mm-hmm. Like, so when you're doing that, I'm going copy. That's what's up. She doing. I don't look at things and go like, oh no, nah, now she think this, that, or whatever. No, nah, I ain't that. I experienced that. Yeah, I'm the one going. That's what's up. I'm glad you're doing it. Let me know if there's any way I can help. You, you did. Need to, you need me to post something. You need me to tell somebody. My wife, before she was my wife, was down there getting her hair yes. done. Yes, like, yes, she did. But like that and your was your sister in law. Yeah, copy that. Them too. Yep. Yeah, seven years this summer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like you always being able, you always doing stuff made mm-hmm. us stay in contact. Uh, and the fact that like I always tell people, I have no problem ever saying this to people. I love you mm-hmm. and I will do anything for you. You are you my sister. Not love you to do. And I've always told like my wife, even like I said before she was my wife, don't go through my phone because you might see, Rel might just text me like, Hey boo, I love you. And if you don't know who that is, yes, you might look at that and perceive things to be the wrong way. And then if you talk about my sister, we're going to have a problem. I love you, C. Yeah, because if you like, who is this B tech? All right, hold up, because she like <laughs> this is not who we about to do. <laughs> I love we... sister. I mean, I love her too. You had to give her board training. I mean, I copy every it's always safe and it's, it's been the same thing for me yeah, I've been plenty of arguments in marriage about jihad's going to be around honey you gotta I mean either you're going to be on board or you're not yeah hey, copy uh this is just is what it is um now <laughs> before we wrap up episode 103 like I said the Jeezy edition uh Lord. let them know where to follow you and all of that good stuff all right so real estate dot empire on instagram is where you're going to find the only the real estate information <clears throat> and the real estate law information but real estate.rel on instagram that has like all of the handles in the bio for the paralegal services for all of that stuff so you can do either one real estate empire real estate.empire or real estate.rel on instagram copy that sis appreciate you coming on love you that's love episode you too. 103 and we are 